everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's on the Tube, or welcome back. If this is your... Are we up to 7 or 8? I think we're up to 7, 8. Yeah, to your 8th Nancy Drew Season 2 episode review. I am back in the chair in the comforts of my own home. Yeah, I was away last week if you um, catch last week's episode review. I apologize for the quality of that and the lack of an intro. Filtering. Me wearing a mask. Now my hair is like very different. Um, yeah, I got a haircut while I was down when I was away. Um, and um, I'm going to use to it. It's going to be a little bit of an adjustment for both me and the camera as I'm adjusting it. Down. Hope everything's doing well in your life. So this week on this St. Patrick's Day episode of Nancy Drew. I, I don't know why. I just it's St. Patrick's Day is today as I'm recording this. This last week definitely put us in an interesting place by giving us more Bess's backstory and I feel like, yeah, because for me, definitely this season, we didn't really been getting a lot of best stuff. It was mostly either Nancy or George or Nick. And, like, Ace and Best have kind of been a little bit relegated to the sidelines. But because, you know, they, we just either use their connections or they're for comedic relief or they're just their attention to the scene. Or just, they're there to back up the character. They're not necessarily being the ones taking the forefront. This week, Best def definitely does take control. We get more of a backstory. From her time pre Nancy Drew pre pre the show, and um, I I really enjoyed it, and definitely this was not a simple clean and dry um, thing that I was expecting, like uh, like a typical show. This, this definitely does have ramifications, as well as getting little bits of other progressing for other storylines. So this definitely had a lot of this episode had a lot to manage this week, and I feel like it did the best it could. I don't believe it's one of its stronger episodes. I definitely feel like this is more like a middle of the road. Like it's not bad. It's it's still good at the end of the day, but it's not necessarily something like. You know, we're just continuing the storylines. We're not at the big payoffs yet. We're just adding tension and suspense as we go along. So let's go through the butchered recap and talk about it uh, more specifically. So we begin with a flashback. That's right, flashback. Um, it's Bess and this uh, the, the dude from last week. I forgot his name. I'm going to call him douchebag number one. If we get any more douchebags in the show. Um, they're off traveling via... Um, um, they're at an airport about to get to check in their bags. It's very eerily similar to something I did recently. Um, Bess is looking not to be in the happiest place, whatever. She's being pretty clumsy, which is not so far difficult, t difficult from the best that we know, but something's definitely amiss here. Something's definitely wrong. And the guy's kind of being a little bit more controlling than I would feel comfortable with seeing on television or just in general. However, while Bess makes another accident, she spills some juice or some something. She spills something on the floor, on the back. She goes down to do to clean it off, uh, but then she puts something in his, the douchebag's bag. Oh god, that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit weird to say. He she puts something in his bag, and then she finishes off cleaning it up. But then she says she has to go to the bathroom to kind of um, clean off herself. The guy douchebag grabs her before she's able to continue forward and saying like just don't you know you're giving her like the the, the school like you know make it quick but don't take don't take too long similar to like how like you know the, he's just trying to like keep, keep her in line keep her in check but while best goes off to um go to the bathroom the um the, po the local policemen show up to arrest douchebag apparently for the for the, I think it was because of illegal euros or U illegal ca currency that was in his bag. Well, that, that we know of. So he gets taken away by the cops and um, he's obviously screaming towards Bess's name. But, you know, she's not showing up. Indicated this was her chance to escape to America. Thus leading into presumably the event. Now, this is kind of weird because, like, um, I forgot what the heck season one storyline began with Bess. In terms of, like, how her flow of events when what turns of like her coming to America, her coming to Horseshoe Bay to find the Marvins, all that sort. It was a little bit confusing for me now that I'm thinking about it. But so this is probably the moment where she, she broke free of this guy. And now we cut the present day where she's happy now. She's, you know, talking with, um, Diane Marvin, the, the, the patriarch of the Marvin family about this upcoming event for the Marvins. And my, my first getting tired for saying Marvin so many times. It seems like she, um, Bess is in a good place right now with the family. You know, they're starting to accept her, but Bess wants to become one of them truly, even though the patriarch keeps saying that, no, you know what, you keep standing out, you're another shining addition to the family, that sort of thing. And obviously Bess, Bess wants to establish her own, just wants to be part of the family so she doesn't risk getting expelled or something. 
um, Ace begins texting her um, ASAP wise about the whole the douchebag showing up in the in the hotel and asking for Bess, that sort of thing where we left off last week with the cliffhanger. Bess is not entirely concerned until she gives gives Ace a call. Ace reveals about everything. Bess tries to deny it at first, but once Ace starts to tell her, "No, you're the, the, the it's not a it's not a misinterpretation. It's a, it's an actual picture. There's photographic photographic evidence of this man having your photo, claiming to be your husband." And coincidentally, the the douchebag shows up at the at the pier, where waiting for Bess. The two talk. He's playing the very chill, pissed off mode where. Yeah, he's pissed off for what Bess did to him. Did to yeah, um, back years ago, but he 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 has a reason for coming back here, since how we discovered her was because of the Marvin photo and and where now that you know knowing that he she's in Horseshoe Bay, so that's why he came there as well as the opportunity presents itself that the Marvins have this very special heirloom, this very gem of an artifact in the the spiders. The spiders... Uh, what was it? I forgot. It happens something to do with spider. I know that. He wants it. He said that if, if Bess can get him this item, then the depth he has, what she has with him is clear, which is like, well, dude, you were an asshole to her. What depth is there? I mean, you should be grateful you're even out on the streets. Don't make it worse. And, and immediately as I was thinking, like, this also was going to be the typical, like, Bess is going to recruit the others. They're going to find a way to beat the guy, you know, put him away from jail. You know, the typical, you know, storyline that I would have anticipated. But no, it's, it's nothing like that since. I believe he uses the term like, I will expose your past to your new family if you do not cooperate. So Bess is scared. She goes to Ace. Ace is, you know, obviously co consulting her and saying, look, just tell the truth to, to them. They will understand. They will find a way to um, figure things out. And honestly, that would have been a perfect Thing. Ace once again making the right calls like tell her make sure she knows so that this won't come to bite you in the ass uh, and of course in the moment Bess said yeah yes sure yeah, obviously we're, she's going to go through with this plan so they, they so they continue so they decide to go forward with this um and then, well they're in the club I mean, also meanwhile beforehand I don't know where the scene was in I, it was probably like during the um the beginning portion um I don't know where Nancy and George, now Nancy being aware about Odette and George. Now Nancy wants to help George get Odette out. She's trying to collect the information, trying to figure out, okay, when did this happen? How did this work? How does the whole interaction... She's trying to come up with some sort of plausible solution to get rid of this spirit. At least they're not dying. Let's, let's just say that. Um, th from there, they um, Nancy pulls up a picture of the, um, the Shroud records, the uh, people who owned the Shroud before she... Stole it, give or take. Um, turns out there was a man, there was a man in 1987 that um, that used the shroud. So there you go. We found the solution. So then we gotta go find this guy. Ask him what's up. How do how does how do you get this under control? If he had any similar expectations, Nancy's about to text um, Nick some excuse to get let go of the situation. However, best. Um, George does not want Nick to know. Still quite yet, considering the fact that he's still recovering from the whole. George almost dying scenario in his head, so now's not the time to reintroduce another crazy thing about George into his head, So, which makes sense. So they come up with a BS excuse. They're able to get off the hook. So back to also having in that moment, Nick, Nick is talking to Ryan about his plans for like now slowly getting into back in the Hudson's good grace and trying to get back on the inside, trying to click the only information they need to take down uh, Mr. Hudson once and for all. Nick's being a little careful with this since, like, you know, Ryan's first assignment. Well, his first part of this is he ha he has a, p a puff piece coming out, so he has to be interviewed by someone, a very hard-hitting reporter. Nick's very scared that Ryan's going to blow this, you know, horribly and all their, their efforts are gone before it even begins. Ryan said, no problem, man. I got this in the back. Just trust me. We'll trust him. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of Ryan, but I'm like, you know what? We got no choice. We, 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 we got to take out this guy. We got to take out Mr. Hudson, so... You gotta be, you gotta be friends with your enemy to take down a bigger enemy. That's what I say. Um, so back to, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm eventually gonna diverge into a different storyline, but actually no, I can't because they diverge again. Never mind. So Bess and um, Ace are heading outside. They meet this new employee. Which, holy shit, I know him. This guy, he was from the hundred. Um, he was, um, the, 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 damn it, he was the, the son of the two fan, fa a fan favorite couple from the beginning of the show. He was the son. When they went to the future, or they, they were cryo sleeping for 97 years or 100 years, I forgot what the timeline was. 
Um, actually, you know, it probably wasn't 97 years. I was probably thinking of something else. Um, so he was a son. I know him. I know this actor. Uh, he didn't have any lines, which is kind of weird. I really hope this isn't just like a cameo. I really hope he does play a role. Because I did like his character on The 100, from what I remember. Because I... I I'm gonna be honest. The Hundred's a very um, interesting show that I'll probably talk about someday on, on the on the overall show here in one season two. Um, but I, I I like them as an actor. So if he's gonna play a role in the future, definitely they're planting the seeds there. So hopefully they're not taking advantage of like you know we need a face because they could have clearly cast a random actor. No, they put him in there for a reason. What it is, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, Best gets a call text from the to head back to the back which is the Patriarchs there. Bess is about to reveal the everything by, you know, the, the backstory and the abuse. Not, the abu not really the abuse, they're more like a Kilgrave type thing, if you remember from Jessica Jones. Uh, the douchebag. She's ready to confess. And then the Patriarch pulls her aside like, I know about your past. I know you did some shady con deals, you know, before. As long as you admit that's in the past, we are good. And, you know, um, Bess is like, great. I know this family is now first. My past is behind me, and I'm like, great, great line, great delivery. Now just tell her that you're having this issue so she can help you or maybe figure out a plan to, to con him. And she doesn't, but what, what Bess does is he immediately calls the dude and says, oh, hey, um, Bess already knows my, um, she already knows my background, so there's no reason for you to, to, um, to um, blackmail me. So I'm not going to do your plan. And he's like, oh, oh, Bess, you don't even know. And obviously he takes that as a threat and a challenge. So he's going to up the ante somehow as um, we continue onwards. So we're kind of in like, we'll come back, we'll come back to this storyline, but we'll, we're going to progress with everyone else's for a bit. Um, we'll start with George and, and Nancy. So they head over to the guy's house that had the shroud before um, they used it for George. Turns out the guy died. Which is sadly very, very sad. But also apparently what's interesting about his death is that he died minutes before George's resurrection. Yeah, so now the theory is that if you use the shroud, the next per so so the theory is that well the two the, the, the two supernatural paranormal components for this shroud is that any deceased soul that's around you will be attached to you when they use the resurrection slash your time is up when someone else uses the shroud without warning. So George is basically like, she has to be the last person to use this shroud for the rest of her life. Otherwise, they're, they're never going to, she's, 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 she's going to be dead again. Um, so armed with this fact, they're trying to figure out what to do. Nancy still thinks that they should bring Nick into this. So she knows about this. George is still like, no, they have a little bit of spat in the in the in Nancy's house. George goes off to the kitchen to do something, but when Nancy goes behind her to kind of like check up on her, she finds George on the on the ground, knocked out, and then Nancy also gets knocked out by who? We'll find out in a moment. Uh, meanwhile, Ryan and the investigator seems to be doing well. Seems that they have a kind of like a, a flirty relationship, or just like maybe just Ryan's just that good of a interview interviewee. Who knows? I really don't know either. So they're progressing through that. Um, Ryan also got invited. I don't know if he got invited to like a separate Hudson thing or he got invited to the Marvins thing. Don't really remember. It was ironic. I'm probably sure. I'm pretty sure they're the same event, but I, I could be wrong as well on that front. So then we head over to the. Um, I've been finding that yawn in for like the past five minutes. It finally beat me. Um, Bess is up with the Marvins. She's happy that, like, the whole thing is over. Everything's fine. Ace is there for more support. Same with Nick. So everything seems to be fine for now. And then she gets a call from him, from the douchebag, and saying that, look, you, you pour us my hand. Like, now I got two people you care about. Yeah, he, he captured Nancy and George and is holding them hostage unless, you know, Bess goes through with the plan to steal the, the, the spider amulet thingy. So Bess has no choice. She lets Nick and Ace know. They got no choice since their lives are in danger, so they have to find a way to steal from her. And again, had Bess just told her, the Patriarch, hey, I have this issue. This might come to backfire on me later if I don't tell you now. But, you know, they, they go they go to planning to try and just take it from her, which somehow works. Somehow. Uh, meanwhile, before we continue with that, um, that, that front, Ryan and the interviewer are progressing pretty well. They're at some weird 
treasure hunt type thing or whatever Ryan said. And the interview view, interviewer assume, um, tells him that she has interviewed other members before of his overarching family, including exploring the theory that like Lucy Lucy had a daughter, or had a child at some point. So the the interviewer is still is now somehow thinking, well, maybe maybe Ryan's the father. Maybe maybe he's a secret baby daddy. But of course, Ryan, obviously, remembering back a few episodes ago when he talked to Mister Drew, like no one can know about Nancy. No one can know. She has to say a secret from the public. Otherwise, Mr. Hudson's going to have an eye out an eye out for her. But, you know, again, no one says anything. No one says anything. But, you know, we progress forward from there. Um, meanwhile, uh, George and Nancy, well, Nancy and George, meanwhile, Odette is, are being held hostage. Odette's in full control of George's body. She's kind of mocking Nancy a little bit. Like, kind of like, you know, I don't want to be in this situation. I'm not even supposed to be here, but guess what? I am. So we might as well make the best of it. And, you know, she's bringing back her backstory about the whole when she was the Glaria and like, you know, everything turns out one of the Hudsons were on the original boat that killed her. So, yeah, um, this is, oh, that's not really an entire happy ghost right now. She's not she's not she's not a friendly ghost. So once Bess takes the the amulet or the, the locket or whatever it is, um, she meets up with the douchebag. It seems like the douchebag won the day, considering the fact Bess, again, did not tell anyone besides Ace, and then later Nick, I'm like, oh my god, Bess, let them know they're your friends! Oh god! But it seems like he's about to take his leave, he kind of, like, moves in close to Bess, kind of give her, like, a final message, you know, before he takes off with the amulet, presumably to start a new life somewhere, who knows. Uh, meanwhile, thankfully, Nick and George manage, Nick and um, Ace managed to find Nancy and George, so they break into the warehouse looking thing. They stop the fire from burning them up. They try to untangle them and Odette's kind of not, not liking to get out of this chokehold, this um, rope chokehold for some reason, which is like weird. Uh, but eventually George snaps back in, calms down, manages for Nick to let her escape. And then they're, they're all saved. They're both saved. Don't worry about it. Uh, meanwhile, while Bess is, I'm assuming heading back to the party or just heading back home or something, um, she gets founded by... Um, the patriarch of the, of the Marvin family, who reveals that she's always had her, she had the spider thing um, microchipped. And it's still on Bess. So initially, my, my confusion was, oh, Bess tricked him somehow. So he wouldn't get the thing. But no, 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 he got the real thing, except he planted it back on Bess to paint the picture that Bess took it, stole it, and was about to run away with it. So now on Miss Marvin's front, um, well, the patriarch of the Marvin family, uh, she's... Not listening to Bess's story. She doesn't believe her anymore. And even if it was true, like, Bess still stole from her. And, you know, and what she wants is for Bess to move on from her past to focus on her Marvin future. But she's clearly not there yet. So she she says along the lines, like, you are, we are not family anymore. We're not related. And she leaves. Obviously, Bess is heartbroken. We head back to the Drew household where everyone's reunited. Everyone's trying to console Bess. But... No one can really do that. I mean, the whole point of her being in America was to be part of this larger family that she found she was in, and now she's kicked out of it. So the douchebag actually did screw her over, kind of like what she did to him years ago, which I know the, the first time was justice, but douchebags are douchebags, so that'd be the case. So everyone's kind of splitting up, kind of like just figuring things out. It's, it's just down to Nancy and George. Um, Nancy also brings out this music box, he, she got from the yard sale with from the dude. Uh, turns out this this um, music box was from a loony bin or a mental institution, meaning that at some point the voices in Marvin and the, the, the guy's head was too, was too much for her him to handle. So he had he had to get checked in um, to a mental hospital, which is another possibility George might have to deal with. Could he, could she not figure out how to coexist with Odette, which is another interesting thing for them to explore. Uh, this is where we kind of split off the cliff cliffhanger solutions. Woo. I'm assuming Bess burns up the letter with the Marvin signature on it or just something indicating like she's burned the bridges with the Marvin, sadly. Jordan does let Nick know about everything. Nick takes it calmly. And now they got to just make sure the shroud isn't taken again. And then someone breaks into the claw and takes the shroud. Again, where are the workers? Where are they? To let I understand this was after hours. I get it. I know that, but still, still, 
And the interviewer calls her uh, her boss, her, her her publisher, letting them know like there's a bigger story here. She's gonna stay in town for a couple more days to get some more information. So she's catching on to Nancy's connection with Ryan. Well, at least Ryan's potential daughter or you know child. So will it all blow up? I don't know. I mean, one of these storylines got to be tackled on next week. You you, you assume. Um, so yeah, that was it for the episode. Um, so again, overall, um, I really did. This episode was good. I this was very middle of the road. We're just getting to the next destination. We are we we were we are, we are setting up things for future storylines to tackle on, and um, I feel like they did a, a pretty good pretty good job on it. Um, Nick taking the backseat was kind of a little bit bummer, but like he had a lot of attention the last couple of weeks, so I'll, I'll make it that putting Bess on the forefront and giving her like an uneasy situation to deal with, as well as giving her an uneasy punishment for her actions, is another thing that is interesting. And it's not like a cookie cutter, like oh, you know, everything's gonna be fine in the end. And again, Bess is an idiot for not telling the paycheck way before advance, but that's her fault. She's gonna have to pay for it. The George and Odette stuff is getting a little interesting, but, you know, I don't know how long this dynamic is going to last for before we expect some sort of change, if you assume. Um, the whole Ryan interviewer thing, it can go either either way, but who knows? We'll figure it out next week. Um, so for me, I give this episode one and a half thumbs up. I still enjoyed it. still thought it was a good episode. So, yeah. Um, I think that's going to do it for me this week, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Tube from Action X. If you want to know more what we're doing overall, what's in the two besides our Nancy Drew Season 2 episode reviews, we're doing Walker episode reviews each and every Friday morning after a brand new episode on the CW on Thursday nights, and then free the next day on the CW app, which was, which was, was I using last week. So it works. Definitely does work. Thank you so much, CW. Uh, we do the Rookie Season 3 episode reviews each and every Monday morning after a brand new episode on Sunday nights on ABC and then on Hulu the next day. We're currently on a little, a little bit of a break, a little bit of a hiatus for that one. So next week will be a quick impression on Fear the Walking Dead. We're continuing our Walking Dead journey somewhat, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, but if you don't care about Nancy Drew, you're in luck. We'll be back next week for another episode of Nancy Drew. We're already at we're more than past, past the halfway mark of the season. I don't know how many episodes this season has with the whole pandemic thing. I hear 18. I don't think it'll be 20. I, I think the only show that's hitting 20 this season is Supergirl for their for her last season. That's all I know. I mean, with the pandemic and everything, everything's been thrown under why I wouldn't be surprised if it's 16 episodes, to be honest with you. I mean, I would prefer a much more tighter, shorter season than like a little bit more extended. But with COVID and everything, who knows? I know Walker's going up to 18 episodes, so that is another th factor, but... Who knows? I mean, I'm more I'm satisfied with whatever episodes we get for this season since we are getting season three down the line. So I don't mind, but we'll see. But I'm pretty sure we're at the halfway mark at this point. So get ready for that for next week to ramp things up, hopefully. Um, but again, this has been What's in the Tube from Action X. If you want to see more What's in the Tube, subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com slash Action X. Ring that bell for notification when our next Nancy Drew episode review is live, which is each and every Thursday morning. Um, like, favorite, share this review if you want to. It helps us up with the algorithm. Helps us get out, gets us out there to other fans of the hashtag Drew Crew peoples. Um, as well as it's for free to share. Um, follow us on Twitter to be up to date with any updates for the channel. Follow us on Twitch for streaming. And for all you Drew Crews, Drew Crewers, uh, members of the Drew Crew, I'll see you all next week for the next episode. But let me know in the comments below what did you think of this week's episode. Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you like the best stuff? Did you like the Odette stuff? Let me know in the comments. I'm always down for conversation. Uh, but until then, be safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.